Hello, it is Sunday, April 30th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday puzzle, which means a large themed grid today, and we have a named puzzle. Uh, name dropping is the name of the puzzle, and that is certainly seems redolent of theming. In any case, this named edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Tom Nemchek, Matt R., Noah Besenson, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining this channel, keeping the whole thing going, and I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to help support this series as well, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field uh, and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And that includes today another um, Boss Word Spring Themeless League competition puzzle that is scheduled to go live, I think just a few hours after I publish this uh, video. Uh, so enjoy that if you're a patron. And uh, of course, if you're a benefactor, you also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. So thank you to everybody who has become a patron at any level. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. And do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you if you've done that, if you've subscribed to the YouTube channel. And finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. It's a nice, friendly chat community, and there's a link to that in the description field. All right, let's get on to today's crossword. This, as I said, is entitled Name Dropping, which sounds, I mean, it sounds like the sort of thing where you know, maybe you'll remove somebody's name from a phrase, and then it, that will sort of create a punny phrase. I'm, <laughs> I'm just guessing. I don't know, but that's just the kind of thing that happens. That it, it just sounds like what this might be. We'll, we'll find out. It could be completely off. In any case, it was constructed by Lewis Rothline and Jeff Chen. This is, I think, the ninth puzzle for Lewis Rothline and the hundred something for Jeff Chen. An extremely experienced crossword. Uh, constructor and proprietor of the xwordinfo.com uh, website, uh, full of information and statistics about the New York Times crossword. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see. Oh, right. Okay. So it's a, it's a vertically symmetrical crossword. It's symmetrical about a vertical axis. We can see if we folded the puzzle in half along a line bisecting it vertically, we would you know, maintain the symmetrical disposition of these black cells. And then we also have a not quite symmetrical arrangement of shaded cells. I wonder if those will be the names that we leave out. I bet that's going to be how this works. Uh, in any case, let's just keep solving and see what happens. Cuts back. Diets or restricts or pairs down or something. I don't know. ID that's never reused. ID that's never reused. Oh, social security number, maybe. It's not reused between people. It's issued to U.S. residents, I suppose, and never, each number is unique. Improv bits could be skits or sketches or scenes, maybe? Doesn't, I don't really think of a scene as being an improv bit, per se. Not sure. Let's keep looking around. What a gavel bang may mean. Order or silence or... Um, not actually sure. Oh, well, it didn't matter anyway. No. Oh, well, it didn't matter anyway. No prob. No. Let's look at this. 2020 film starring a cartoon dog. Oh, I'm not sure offhand. I'm not sure if this is something I should expect to know or not. Oh, the gavel bang. Gavel could be at a, uh, I was thinking at a, in a courtroom, obviously, but it could be at an auction could be the auctioneer saying the item has been sold. Does that help me with this? I don't think it does, unfortunately. Uh, just, I'm just not sure. Maybe, maybe it'll be obvious in retrospect. Anybody home? Hello? You could be yelling, maybe? Improv bits. I mean, it could still be scenes. Does that look any better? Oh, Scoob? It Was there a Scooby-Doo movie, maybe, just called Scoob? I have no idea. That doesn't sound familiar to me at all, but but it could be the case. Reeked. Smelled. I'm wondering if I, <laughs> I'm still thinking about my theory here, and I was thinking maybe I could spell smelled outside of the name, but it doesn't. Uh... Oh, stank, maybe. Shark tank? No. Uh
I'm trying to think of names that could go in here. This is, this is, the, I, I'm, I'm so wedded to this idea, but um, I don't know if it's correct. Uh, anyway, bestow could be endow. Maybe you bestow a gift, you endow, endow a gift. Maybe improv bits are scenes. I guess, right? I guess that makes sense. You say, we're going to do a scene and here's the premise of the scene. And then we're going to do the improv following from that. I suppose that's probably the case. One of 100 in Pooh's Woods, that's the A.A. A. Milne. Winnie the Pooh stories, of course, the 100 acre wood. Uh, Herman, Sherman. Oh, sh yes. Okay. I was right. <laughs> I was right. That is how the theme works. This is a Sherman tank, which is a type of uh, obviously war machine. And um, Herman is a name being dropped from the phrase to make stank, which means reeked, smelled. Okay, good. I'm very pleased with myself for having called that, um, even though I did waste a bit of time initially, just failing to think of the name before I had some crosses. All right. New York's City Field is um, is a stadium that's cited in the New York Times crossword, not infrequently. A pair of glasses could be rims. In other words, a pair of glasses, a pair of spectacles, eyeglasses, has two rims, a pair of rims. Blank blockers, but heart rate meds, beta blockers. You hear about that. That must be what this is. And the get go. Um, something ready? I'm not sure. Longtime anchor of NBC Nightly News. Now, this is interesting in that this will also be a name. So, presumably, we'll drop a name out here, but we'll be left with a different name because longtime anchor of NBC Nightly News, I assume this is going to be somebody's name. That's interesting. Uh, well, let's let's get some crosses on that. Curved edges formed by intersecting vaults in architecture. Well, it'll end with an S probably. Tegan and blank, indie pop duo. Oh, Tegan and Sarah I've heard of. So there we go, that's probably right. And baseball slang for a home run, not sure. Sorry, cheering loudly could be a roar. Big, big, loud roar of sound. An upside could be the top of something, literally. And the, that question mark means we're treating this in a slightly punny way, because obviously upside, idiomatically in English, you think of that as being the sort of metaphorical upside of something, the good element of something that's happened. But here we're referring literally to the side that is up. Okay, so what can we do then? Hi. I what? I'm not sure. Attaches with a click, snaps on, um, you know, a button or something like that. Snaps on, high, high, the high C's. Okay, high C's, that's a phrase. And baseball slang for home run, is it a tater? I don't, that doesn't sound familiar to me at all, but not, which I'm not saying to suggest that means it's incorrect. It's just a testament to my lack of baseball knowledge. Uh, so check out as a book. So here will be another one of these. Bar you borrow a book, so we can see that borrow is being spelled with the in the cells outside of the shaded area, and then um, I am just not good at getting this, am I? A bow and arrow, Wanda. There we go. Bow and arrow. Bow and arrow is the full phrase here. We drop the name Wanda, and we're left with borrow. This is very clever. Oh, well, it didn't matter anyway. No loss. There we go. HS Safety Organization. Um, is it High School Safety Organization? Not sure what that's referring to. And Little Monster is... Hmm. Is no loss not correct? Surely. Little Monster. A snot, maybe? You could refer to it. Impudent child is a little snot, maybe. Two thirds of 105 across, which is home project initials. That's probably DIY, do it yourself. And then two thirds of do it yourself. Oh, it's just, I see, it's just unpacking two thirds of the words, do it yourself, um, which is obviously. It's, it's not two thirds in terms of total quantity of letters, but the count of words anyway. All right, high school safety organization. Oh, uh, sad, 
Students Against Drunk Driving? Is that something? I've heard of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Is there any way this is M? No, I don't think so. It must be this. And that's why it's school, because it's students against. That must be that must be the answer. Woe-inducing experience. Something times? No, this doesn't look very good. Can you dig it? Yes, you can. A ditch or... So this, this is sort of an interesting clue. It's phrased as a pair of sentences. And uh, it's most likely going to be a sort of observation about the answer rather than something that actually means all of this. So it'll be something you can dig, but I don't know. It's not a ditch. It's a, what can you dig? A, I don't know why I can't see it. A cutting part of the onion. So this being capitalized plus the question mark means we're referring not to an onion, the, the root vegetable, but the onion, the online satirical newspaper. So the cutting part of it would be its satire. Uh, cutting in a sort of cutting wit, metaphorical sense. Guarding as a goal. Tending, does that, if you're tending goal, tending, a, uh, you know, soccer goal, for instance, uh, football goal. Um, oh, I'm just not good at these. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Oh, you can dig dirt in a garden or something. Okay, that must be the answer to that. Woe-inducing experience. Something trips, acid trips. That could, that could certainly induce the word woe at, at a minimum, I suppose. Uh, so one's getting hit on at parties. And, and there's a question mark here. So we have quite a few of these punny question mark clues today. Um, but I'm not sure if that is right offhand, so I'm going to keep going. Tool that evolved from the sickle, the scythe, I would think, for reaping in a you know, in the fields, guarding as a goal. Oh, no, trick. Oh, trick ending. What is that? It was a trick ending. I mean, Rick is a name, obviously. Trick ending. Is it, does it mean a, in, a, in fiction or something, a sort of twist, that kind of thing? I'm not sure. Um, but it sounds like a plausible phrase. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it is. Popular singer who was recorded in Elvish. That's interesting. I mean, it, Based on the crosses, it must be Enya. That's fascinating. I wonder if that was... Maybe that was for the purpose of the Lord of the Rings films or something like that. I'm not really sure, but that that's interesting. Ones getting hit on at parties are pinatas. Right, you could hit a pinata with a bat to release the candy inside. And the Hindu god of pleasure, Kama... It makes sense. And plastic conveniences are ATM cards. It's a obviously convenient way to withdraw cash from an automated teller machine. And it's made of plastic. Squawk box network. Um, starting with C, I'm going to guess this is CNBC, which is a um, US cable network. Um, and I think it's the sort of financial affairs cable uh, kind of arm of NBC News. All right. Lead into tech. You could have biotech, biotechnology. And lead in often just means linguistically a prefix as opposed to something kind of grander than that. It often just means simply letters that would lead into tech. Atlanta's blank center. Not sure about this one. Um, this will be an arena or something, I, I suspect. Related to could be akin to Oh, CNN Center, maybe, because CNN, that's actually another U.S. cable network that is, I think they're headquartered in Atlanta. So that that could be the answer. Singer Marion, the first African-American to perform at the Met. This is Marion Anderson, who's a, um, well, who was a an opera, sing, opera singer and um, I think also sang maybe folk music or religious music, but um, very acclaimed, very acclaimed opera singer. Okay, informants informally. Well, this looks like Ethan, doesn't it? Not that that helps really enormously, but what is this? Informants informally. They're rats or grasses or narcs. Does that, does narcs work? No, it no, doesn't. Um... I was just thinking that would 
technically work with the, uh, the exterior bits here. I'm not sure. I just, I'm just not, just not good at jumping to those. Botanists specimens, larvae maybe? A botanist could take a, well, no, not really. That doesn't, that would be an entomologist or something like that. What about this? Before in poetry could be air, um, poetic way to say before. And po homophone of vowels not found in this answer. Oh, right. So what vowels A and A and I? Homophone of vowels not found in this answer. A, I, it's just those. I'm not sure I understand what that's looking for. Oh, I see. Eyes? Oh, oh no, the A is in there. Sorry, A is literally in the word answer. I don't know what I was thinking. It's just eyes. And so homophone of litter I is, of course, the body part I. Okay. Angels can be found in it. Um, snow, snow angels? No. Barrier to entry offense, maybe? Botanist specimens. Not sure what's going on there. Repeated musical phrase. A coda? It's not so much, that's not really repeated. A coda would be the thing at the end where you play it after having repeated the rest. So it's sort of the opposite of this in a way almost. Repeated musical phrase. A motif or a riff maybe in more popular music forms. Does that help with this? Informants are finks. Oops, oops, oops. Fine, thanks. Oh, okay, sure. You, well, yeah, you could say, oh, fine, th it's fine, thanks. Or I guess you could sort of sarcastically say, oh, that's fine, thanks, if someone you think is, un you know, not appreciated something you did for them. Uh, anyway, this is probably riff then. And then botanist specimens are, oh, flora, as in uh, flora and fauna? Is that what we're looking for here? Angels can be, I don't think that's right. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on over here. Barrier to entry. A style, maybe. A turnstile, for instance, is one, one sort. Or a style in a field. Maybe this is Flores. So what is this? Angels can be found in... Is it snow? Is it use? But you, yeah, you is definitely in the word found, which is in that clue. I don't understand. I must be missing something blindingly obvious. I'm sorry. Let's let's keep checking these these crosses here. Has a rough night. Dog sits for somebody maybe. Snoy. I'm. What am I? What am I missing here? This really looks like it should be snow, which would mean this would be use the sheep. Homophone of vowel. I'm sorry. This is, I must be doing something just unbelievably. Uh, obviously wrong, and I just I'm just not sure what it is. Homophone of vowels. Oh no, I is there because it's right there, and U is right there. Homophone of vowels. Oh, is it just in homophone of vowels not found in? Is it just in literally the words this answer? Oh, answer, not clue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Homophone of vowels not found in this answer. Okay, I mean, there are many, there are several vowels not found in this answer. But I guess among them are use. That is a strange clue. Homophone of vowels not found in this answer. Am I, am I misinterpreting this? I mean, it's you, technically this makes sense. It just seems very strange to me. All right, well, we'll keep going. Concern for coders and copy editors. Um, I'm not sure. What about this? Old Testament prophet. Um, why can I not think of this either? Burst of sonic ecstasy. Is this, I think this might be wrong. It's, it, these are all seeming implausible. What is it? Not acid trips. What is this? Because this could be a burst of sonic ecstasy could be an eargasm, which is a phrase that is sometimes here. And then um, a weed trips, I guess. Weed trips. You don't really hear that phrase much, do you, particularly? Certainly compared to acid trips. 
um, Old Testament prophet, prophet could be Enos then maybe, and give a lecture without, is, or maybe not. Give a lecture without, I would have assumed that to be ream out. Uh, put on a pedestal, maybe this is still wrong. Colorful seafood. I'm just, this area is just oddly, it doesn't feel difficult and yet I'm doing terribly. <laughs> organization in Argo, I think the, the CIA was the sort of organization that coordinated the evacuation in that film. I mean, obviously the film was a dramatization of history, but anyway, baking measure, a teaspoon, TSP, blank bones, classic spiritual, dem bones, dem bones is a classic spiritual. Okay, well, this is obviously wrong. Oh, what is this? Baking measures. Oh, no, it's not TS because that's, sorry, I was thinking it would end with a P, but the, there's an S here, so it doesn't. So baking measurement could be grams or ounces or colorful seafood, red cod, ounces, perhaps. Puts, put on a pedestal is lionize, maybe? No. Heroize. There you go. So concerns for quoters and copy editors are errors. Sure. Okay, fair enough. Um, I thought it was going to be more exclusive to these fields, but I think errors are concerns for lots of people. But anyway, I see, I see what the point is, a sort of compilation error in code or a typo in copy. Anyway, Old Testament prophet looks like Amos, the Amos then. And then, oh, head trips. Ah, okay. That is more of a phrase. That is an actual phrase. So that was a real head trip, you could say. It made me say, whoa. Okay, fair enough. All right, finally done with that. I think unnecessarily uh, confounding corner. I must have made that more difficult for myself. Anyway, uh, a learned person is wise. And penalty boxes in hockey lingo, I don't know, unsurprisingly. Pay playfully bite, like a puppy might, for instance, is nip at. And car driven by Thelma and Louise, familiarly. Is a T-bird a Ford Thunderbird, I believe? Penalty boxes and hockey lingo, right. What was that? And word with rolling or bowling is a, a rolling pin or a bowling pin. Those are both phrases. Oh, the sin penalty boxes. I mean, it would make sense to start with sin. You've sort of committed a sin, so to speak. So we're putting you in the box, but what's the rest of it? Sin bins, maybe? That rhymes. That makes it sound, <laughs> sound more likely. So I think that's probably the answer. Almost done. In a sec, you could say. And prohibition and others, those are historical eras. So obviously prohibition in the United States is an era. And like England in the late 16th century. Like England in the late 16th century. What is that getting at? I mean, that was before the union with Scotland. So it was not yet the kingdom of Great Britain. Does that help? Probably not. What is this asking for? Not sure. Feeling down is sad, maybe. I mean, it could be as simple as that, I suppose. Uh, trig function, no, maybe not, because trig function, starting with a C in six letters, I would assume to be cosine. A, although, uh, in other words, a trigonometric function in mathematics. But trig, I'm not sure how to interpret this, because trig is an abbreviation of trigonometric. And so... It makes me wonder if the answer will also be abbreviated, but cos, you know, so in, in which case cosine would be COS. And so I'm wondering if there's, you know, cosecant or something abbreviated, but I don't know that any of the abbreviations are six letters long, which makes me think maybe we do just have to type out a full function. And trig is just a common enough abbreviation that it's not being considered an indicator that the answer will also be abbreviated. I don't know. Let's look at the crosses. Feeling down, you're, oh, you're, you're low, you're feeling low. And actress Lillian with a 75-year film career, Lillian Gish. Boy, 75-year film career. That's unbelievable to imagine. Insulating sleeve for a beverage. A koozie? Yeah. A sort of beer koozie, those foam um, foam insulators <laughs> through my through my uh, through my former, long time ago, former podcast, Idle Thumbs, we used to sell beer koozies with Jeff Goldblum's face on them, and we called it the Cold Bloom. Uh, theme Park Cry, you could say we on a um, uh, 
a um, roller coaster. I don't know why that took me a moment. Refined could be, oh, I don't know. I just had some ideas, but none of them are six letters long. Uh, director of The Shining and Dr. Strangelove. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. What's going on down here? Whoa! I just understood the rest of the theme. This is the Elizabethan era in, in England in the late 16th century. And the name, we're not just dropping it from... Wow, this is, this is a real moment of amazement for me here. Uh, penny drop moment, as they call it in cryptic crossword solving uh, here in the UK. But um, the name is not just being dropped from this answer. It's literally dropping to the bottom of the grid. So Ethan drops down and we're making the Elizabethan era. And then Stanley Kubrick is um, using Rick here. Wow, that is really extraordinary. Well done, Lewis Rothline and Jeff Chen. That is that is a fantastic additional layer because the, the, the first element of the theme, I mean, I sort of, to be honest, I kind of assumed I knew what it was going to be correctly just from the name of the puzzle, but I didn't, it, in no way did I predict this additional bit. It caught me completely by surprise. Oh, that was great. Okay, it means waterless place in Mongolia, in the Gobi Desert, I would think. And then if you're a refined person, you could, um, one way to be refined is to be urbane. Hockey great Bobby, this is a New York Times classic, Bobby Orr, uh, whose name I know through repeated historical use in the New York Times crossword. And then here we have subject of many, a political scandal is a bribe. There we go. All right, so here we're going to put Wanda into this clue. So what is this? 2004 Don Cheadle film set in Africa, Hotel Rwanda. This is amazing. That's re that's very clever. And they all go at the end. They all go exactly at the end. So yes, they do. Wow. So here we have Herman. This is great. Person dealing with casting and lines is a something man. A what? Casting and a fisherman. A fly fisherman. There we go. Fly fish. This is this is amazing. I'm so pleased about this. All right, and these I obviously don't obviously don't have yet, but um, we'll get them eventually. Uh, cautious of could be leery of or wary of. I don't know. Anyway, we'll we'll get to that eventually. Calls for could be sends for you send for a person, and climbing Kilimanjaro, e.g., would be quite a trek. Ood and odd is. What? I'm not sure. Mother hen, maybe? Have a commanding lead is to be well ahead or way ahead or... Hmm, not sure. Could this end with ahead? Ood and odd is... Re oh, reacted. And ood and odd, e.g. So this means ood and odd, for example. So obviously you can react in many different ways. And ooing and aahing is just one example of it. These aren't synonyms. This is just an example of that thing. Bathroom powders could be talcs, like as in talcum powder. And partner of hems, you hem and haw if you're, uh, as I do occasionally in these videos when I can't quite decide on an answer. Grows, something swells, it grows. And if you get a lift, but not a lift, you may be so maybe gets a lift Ubers rather than gets a lift, a uh, different rideshare application. And a shipping option could be UPS, which is a um, obviously a logistics sort of shipping company. Sport whose players wear boots. Uh, polo? I'm just thinking in four letters starting with a P. Do polo players wear boots? I'm sure they do. Uh, verbal equivalent of a thumbs down is... Boo, right? You boo somebody. It's a different way to react. The first letter, letter in gigantic, but not the third, is a soft G, because you say gigantic rather than gigantic or gigantic. So one soft G and one hard G. And then we've filled out the word froth through crosses. That's a loggerhead. So the head of, say, a pint of lager um, has a head. And then one whose boss laughs a lot is an elf, I suppose. So Santa Claus is said to laugh a great deal. And I wonder if they enjoyed the annual recording. Uh, events of interest with on could be goings on. 
and ipso facto is a phrase, and then sort of self-evidently, I suppose, and then plays a Hollywood prank on in brief is TP's toilet toilet paper, so throws rolls of rolls of toilet paper over someone's house, for instance. And then synonym and rhyme of erases could be effaces. There we go. So sort of, you know, if you've heard of self-effacement, you sort of self-erasure in a way. And came up with an invention, uh, lied, an invention of, you know, sort of invented uh, untruths, invented story. String and spool toy is, oh, is it Diabolo or something like that? That sounds familiar. Groupie is a fan. Dastardly expression could be a sneer. And only prez to receive a patent. Oh, that's interesting. Is it Abe, I'm wondering? Because prez is, um, not only is it an, is it sort of abbreviated, it's also kind of, a, it's, it's familiar language. It's not just abbreviation. Um, it's sort of sl- almost slangy language. So you can imagine a nickname like Abe for Abraham Lincoln fitting there. I wonder what his patent was for if this is the case. String and spool, it does look like Diablo, doesn't it? And then runner Sebastian with four Olympic medals, co. Um, uh, Sebastian Coe is a, is a famous Olympic runner. And I think either a lord or a knight, I can't remember which. In any case, longtime anchor of NBC Nightly News, Oh, this looks like Ethel, doesn't it? Does that help down here? <laughs> Accept defeat in modern slang. It does. You could take the L, take the loss, take the L. Oh, there we go. All right. To approve is to thank or I'm not sure. Bezos' sister in children's literature. Oh, uh, this is the Ramona Quimby stories. Ramona, oops, Ramona and, and Bezos. Who are those by? Uh, I read those books when I was young, and now I can't think. Are they Beverly Cleary, maybe? I was thinking... Yeah, I, th- I was thinking Judy Bloom, but it, it's not Judy Bloom, it's Beverly Cleary, I think. Anyway. Um, wait a second, I just typed this incorrectly, didn't I? No, it is remote. It is... Oh, no, Ramona. No, how do you... Ramona. What am I doing? Why am I not... Why? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not a weird moment where I just completely blanked on the thing that I just said. Anyway, musical artist who designed Reykjavik's Imagine Peace Tower. Must be Yoko Ono, certainly one of the official solo artists of the New York Times crossword. Okay, second, perhaps only to Brian Eno. Call overseas could be, call overseas. I wonder if this means a f- overseas sometimes means a foreign language word, but I'm not sure exactly what this is looking for, so I'll move on. Uh, commotion could be a stir, and then pain reliever with an oxy- oxymoronic name. Oh, Icy Hot, because of course, Icy Hot sounds oxymoronic because Icy seems to be the opposite of hot. Bit of vocal fanfare could be ta-da, maybe. You say ta-da, and you're sort of creating a fanfare for yourself to announce your success in some some endeavor. Call overseas. Oh, ahoy. Ah, right. It's not it's not referring to a foreign language. It's referring to uh, a cry on the high seas, which we're also clued elsewhere in this puzzle. Approve is to say okay to something, and a commotion could be a fraca. Spanish title abbreviation could be senora, maybe, S-R-A. And then title woman who has children at her feet in a 1968 hit, Lady Madonna for by the Beatles. There we go. That means I can put Donna right into here. I think it's the first one of these I've solved in, the, in that direction. I've solved it sort of going up rather than going down. Um, and what was this? Have I looked at this yet? Oh, right. Cautious of. Um, I'm not sure what this is, what this is, unfortunately. Cautious of. Yeah, ah, not sure. Microwave, you could sometimes refer to nuking something, microwaving it. And understand, sort of an aggressive phrase, isn't it? I hadn't really thought about that before. 
It's been a long time since I found a microwave. So I haven't thought about the phrase nuking in a while. And I think not having thought of it in some time gives me, <laughs> it just gave me some distance and made me think of it in its context, which is a bit strange. Anyway, understood as coined in 1961's Stranger in a Strange Land, or understand, sorry, is grok. The term to, to, to understand something, to grok something was coined in the Robert Heinlein novel, Stranger in a Strange Land. Curved edges formed by intersecting vaults in architecture are, hmm, I'm a little annoyed that I can't place this, but I, but I don't seem to be able to do so. So who is the longtime anchor of NBC Nightly News? Oh, Tom Brokaw. Tom Brokaw. I do remember that. So broke the law. There we go. There's our phrase. It's actually a very straightforward phrase. And grains, groins, grinds, gruins, none of these sound familiar to me for this purpose. That's that's a shame. Although a groin would be things sort of intersecting, I suppose, if you think about the the, the anatomic, the sort of human anatomical meanings, meaning. So that could be actually, it could be exactly the same word. So let's let's see if that works. The get-go. Square one is the get-go, right from the beginning, right from square one from the get-go. Okay, five, six, or seven in golf. Looks like iron, some kind of iron club. Uh, not sure if that's right. Let's look at this down. What nothing for me might mean. I just ate. If you're in a restaurant and you say nothing for me, I just ate. So if you charge towards someone, you flew at them. I don't remember if we saw that clue before. Uh, does away with, ban something, does away with it. And true that, you could say if you agree with something. Texter's segue could be BTW, by the way, you're segueing to another topic. And having a commanding lead could be way ahead. There we go. When you get it, you may say it. Aha. When you get, all right, when you get it, in other words, when you understand something, you say, aha. All right. Oh, this looks like no joke. Yes, I'm dead serious. It's no joke. And subway line towards New York City's Kennedy Airport. The, I want to say the the A. I should really know this for sure, but I'm I only th I. Uh, let's see. One of sank in Tartuffe. One of five in Tartuffe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, it probably should be familiar to me, but I'm not sure. Eldest of a literary trio. Um, big fat mouth, a maw or a trap. Shut your trap, you might say, maybe. Shut your big fat mouth. That would be equivalent, sort of insulting language. Very tiny bit could be an atom. Small, you know, small bit of matter, and then five, six, or seven to golf mid iron. Okay, it must be classified into into sort of grades or sizes, and these are mid irons. Fair enough. Long blade of a sort could be an oar, um, uh, in the sense of a an oar to row a boat. And oh, Athos is it? Is it Athos of the Three Musketeers? I bet that's the answer. I think we had a Three Musketeers clue last week, maybe. And there's that there's a there's a French Three Musketeers film film coming out, so it's sort of in the air a bit. And then, oh, Chardonnay, oh, to be cherry of something, yes, which basically means to be wary of something. It's essentially the same meaning. Okay, so cautious of, cherry of, and then that creates the wine, Chardonnay. There we go. So, desirable flight option. Non a nonstop flight tends to be a desirable option. Oh, act. Okay, this was a train. Okay, good. I was glad. I'm glad I was right about that. One of Sank and Tartufa. So it must be five five acts. And because um, so generally speaking, in the New York Times crossword, when you have a foreign language word in the clue itself, that generally means the answer will be in that same language. And in this case, it's French. Sank for five in French, and so we're spelling act in the French manner, which ha which has a concluding e. All right, radiates is emits or, um, can't think, goes out with, maybe dates somebody, sees them. Southern California school could be, um, could be San Diego State University. It's entirely plausible. There might be other options there. 
Let's look at this. Tony winning musical with puppets. Oh, right. Ending with a Q. I was wondering what that was going to be. Avenue Q. is a, I've not actually seen this, but I'm aware of it as a musical. Uh, with sort of um, Muppet-looking puppets, like Sesame Street-looking puppets. And radiates... Oh, exudes. If you radiate happiness, you exude happiness. Removals of impurities informally could be detox, detoxes. And something that may elicit stares and brief PDA, public display of affection, perhaps. And then cuts back... A plant, for instance, prunes it. To amp up is to rev up. And Pac-12 college conference athlete is a Ute, I suppose, from the University of Utah, I would imagine. And then cuts back his prunes. So there we go. There we go. All right. Well, not as challenge as overtly challenging a puzzle as we've had in some recent weekends, but of course, as a Sunday grid, it is enormous. So it took. Still took quite a long time, but what a brilliant theme. I really enjoyed that because I went from feeling as though I had sort of already clocked it to being completely flabbergasted by discovering an element of it that had not occurred to me at all and was a fun additional uh, little bit of uh, little bit of discovery. So we had uh, cherry contained within Chardonnay, uh, which also leads to Lady Madonna. We had uh, Brokaw, contained within Broke the Law, which also led to Take the L, um, thanks to Ethel and, of course, Donna in the first one. We had Herman inside of Sherman Tank, which leads to Stank, and that also leads to Fly Fisherman. We had Wanda inside of Bow and Arrow, leading to Barrow and to Hotel Rwanda. We had Rick inside of Trick Ending, leading to Tending and Kubrick. And finally, we had Ethan inside of Fine Thanks, leading to Finks and Elizabethan. I mean, these are very clever. And I think fairly universally, they don't feel like tortured phrases to me. I mean, despite the fact that we have in each one of these cases, we have um, sort of four different words or phrases? Because here we have Cherry, Donna, Chardonnay, and Lady Madonna. So each each of these sort of th theme units contains four different words or phrases, and they all read very nicely. I mean, none of them read as ridiculous forced sort of punny constructions or anything. It's, it's, it's really impressively done. Um, this must have been quite a challenge to put the, to put together, but well done to Lewis Rothline and Jeff Chen. Really really appreciated that one, really enjoyed it. So thank you to them. Let me know how you fared with this puzzle. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's grid, because I do have time for that today. So looks like we have th three set aside. So Clara regarding uh, uh, Njord, the um, um, Nordic god who, uh, who's, I think it was something like do whose domain was the sea, something to that effect. Uh, Clara says, Njord was one of the veneer, god of the sea and father of Frey and Freya. Thank you for that. Apologies for my doubtless mispronunciations. And Nick Six explains Oreo balls, which I don't remember having seen referenced before, but I probably had, <laughs> are made of crushed Oreos mixed with cream cheese and coated in chocolate. Good, but not sure they merit the decadent descriptor. <laughs> Fair enough. And finally, I don't know why I can't seem to get this into my head, but Telegnostic, as this person has pointed out, I think numerous times before, bank CDs continue to be certificates of deposit and not cash deposits. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I keep making that mistake. Uh, certificates of deposit, of course, is what CDs are. And uh, and that's that. So that those are the clues from yesterday's puzzle. That's today's video and that's today's crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, with the much smaller, much simpler themed Monday crossword. Hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care.